Alright, hey, 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 it's Mega here, and uh, I got another Sauron Light B video, and today we'll be installing new wheel bearings on my Supermoto wheel here, alright? The, the rear wheel for my street, my Supermoto street wheel, okay? Um, it's probably the wheel that I put the most miles on because it's the one I ride around town with, <laughs> okay? Um, the, uh, and, and I noticed uh, when, I, when I was working on the wheel, I checked the bearings and and it's a little gritty, all right? You stick your finger in there, you roll it around a little bit, and you can feel it, and it was really gritty. And I checked my other wheels, and like, ah, oh, the rest of them are fine, this one is not. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've, this wheel's been through a lot of punishment, so. And, and I got this wheel brand new, too. <laughs> so I, bu I bought some wheel bearings from uh, Dirty Bike or americansoron.com. I'll put a link at the end of the video um, with a show and tell video about these guys, all right? I also did buy the front wheel bearings just in case, but I don't need to install the front wheel bearings quite yet, okay? It's a good way to get the seals for them, all right? Um, okay, so we'll go take a little closer look at this and then we'll go start working on the, this wheel. Uh, there's there's kind of two ways you can do this. I don't know which way I'm, do, I'm gonna do it today. Um, it, it's all dependent on if I can fit the wheel in my press or not. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, there's there's two ways you can hit it with a hammer and like a punch or something and the bearing will you know The bearing will come out um, by using a blunt force <laughs> Okay, or uh, or you can press it out with uh, with the press all right, and the more proper tool honestly is the press okay <laughs> um, All right, so let's uh, let's go do this and you might be wondering why I'm wearing all these sweats and stuff and the, this really cold sweater um, is because it's freezing in California right now or at least where I live and it's got to be like 40 50 degrees right now don't let the Sun fool you it's cold right now I got a lot of sunlight and I'm making a lot of solar power at least though so all right here we go okay here's a close-up of said wheel um, so this is the tool we're going to use to remove the seals with as you can see the um, The bearings it comes with two bearings All right, it's a good thing. This only has two some motorcycles have three bearings. All right, but that's if you have like a um, Cush drive hub. All right, this this bike does not have a cush drive hub um, But uh, So yeah, so it comes with two bearings and two seals all right and i think they're all the same yeah they're all the same so you can interchange it and stuff um i will just go ahead and change the seals it doesn't look like i have to change the seals but i'll just go ahead and do it all right um and like i said i got this from americansuron.com all right and it's a dirty bike rear wheel bearing kit all right you could just order the bearings all right these bearings look like they're pretty good though so i'll rock them <laughs> these ones last a while too so why it wore out, I don't know. It's because I, I, I ride the piss out of my bike. That's why. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go ahead and pop the, the, the seal out. All right. Basically, you just got to get. Uh, it helps to have a pry bar, but you can probably use a screwdriver. I have a small pry bar like this, and you can just get it underneath there, and then just pry it out, and it should pop out. All right. Sometimes it takes a little. A little extra elbow grease to get it out. Oh, there we go. There you go. It looks pretty clean in there. The seal did a good job. All right. All right. So how do I know the bearing is bad? I can't move it with my finger. <laughs> I can't move it with my finger. Okay. Yeah. So this is the wheel I use to race with, okay, at the racetrack. So I put a lot of high speeds and, and lots of forces on it. So I think that's why it's bad. 
but yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I can't barely move it with my finger. That's how I knew this was bad, all right, guys? All right, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna take the other seal out. Okay. Same way. And this could damage the seal too, so that's one of the reason you should probably replace it. There we go. There we go. Don't be don't be scared to be forceful, especially if you're just re you're gonna replace it. So <laughs> okay, and this is the other side, the sprocket side. I'd say it's a little bit better. <laughs> Man, okay, here just to give you an idea. Okay, I got one of the bear the new bearings right here. Just to give you an idea, see how smooth that is? It it moves very easily. This doesn't move like at all. <laughs> okay, so that's how I know this bearing is bad, okay? So there we go. Alright. So this is all the bearings and stuff. I'm trying to keep them clean for now. Uh, oh yeah, so what you should do is you should freeze them is what you're gonna do, so. It's pretty cold right now, but I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop these bearings in the freezer while we remove the old bearings, okay? So that's what you should, that's what you should do. Take them, before you start, take them out of the package and stick them in the freezer, all right? Okay, did you get that? Yeah, so the reason you wanna freeze the bearing is it shrinks the bearing and it helps it get into the hub a little bit better, all right? Um, if you're using a press, probably doesn't matter as much, but it, it'll help it slide in a little better. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the air from the tire, all right, by taking the valve core out. Um, do you have to do that? Not really, but if you're, uh, I'm, gonna tr I'm gonna attempt to put this in my press with the tire on. If not, um, you're probably gonna have to take the tire off, right? This, this is not a very big ram. I think a 17 will fit in there, all right? We'll see. The 19, I'm pretty sure will, will probably not, will not fit in the, the press unless you took the tire, tire off. Okay. Air's out of there. And that, hopefully that'll let us compress the tire. So we can get it in the in the in the press. Let me see if I can get that press. Right. Okay, rejoice! I think it will fit. It'll fit, but I have to clean up my my area here, where my press is. <laughs> I think I all this stuff, and I have to pull the press forward a little bit because uh, it one it'll hit the um, the rack that's back there, and and I'm pretty sure if I squeeze the tire, we can get it through here. All right, so so 17. Yeah, it's okay. You can you put it in a press. Um, Especially, this is a 20 ton Harbor Freight press, so it should fit here, okay? And then I'll go over, after I'm done with this, I'll go over uh, how to how to install it without a press if you don't got one. Good old hammer and punch. <laughs> okay, I've cleaned up the area around my jack, <laughs> by, by, by press. Uh, so, I managed to squeeze it in there, alright, by, if you let the air out, you can flatten the tires and stick it in there, and it kind of holds itself in place, and it's all nice and centered, so... That's good. Um, so I got it on there. I'm just gonna use one of these, what, is it like an anvil or something? Is that what they call it? <laughs> um, I'm gonna put it right here and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have it so it falls all the way through. That's what I would normally do, but I got these bolts sticking out here. So we're gonna use these bolts as like spacers and we're gonna press it down flat on this. All right, just don't, don't, uh, don't put a lot of pressure on it or else you might break the hub, all right? Um, Hopefully it won't need that much pressure to push the bearings out. If you feel it like it, it's a lot of pressure, don't don't thing it, okay? So now I'm gonna press it down on there, flat. And once you get one, once you get one out, the other one is easy to get out. The, the first side is always the hardest. I'm gonna press it down flat here. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure it's flat on the bottom, all right? For the most part. Now, uh, now I gotta get a punch or some sort. Okay, so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to move the spacer inside. So the way this works is there's there's the two bearings, right? And then there's a spacer. The spacer is like the meat of the sandwich. 
and the uh, and the bearing is the the button. Okay, so I'm trying to move that spacer out a little bit so we can stick this in there so it'll press on the bearing on the bottom. So also remember if if you do this, you're pretty much going to destroy the bearing and you're going to have to replace it. All right, the bearings are already bad, so. I don't really care, okay? So what I'm trying to do is like pry that spacer to the side. There we go. See, I felt it move right there. So you can't see it because it's like kind of in there, you know? Okay, and just make sure you got a long enough thingy for that. All right, so. All right, now I don't have enough space, so I'm going to have to pull this out a little bit. Stick that in there. And then what you want to do... Uh, I think that's good. You want to make sure it kind of it hangs up on the bottom bearing, all right? All right, and then hopefully that'll be good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to push it, put it sideways a little bit, and then we're gonna try to press it out, and hopefully it'll slide right out. <laughs> um, it might be better to stick a pry bar in there first. But... Or hit it with a hammer. Okay. Yeah, so if you were going to use the hammer and that, uh, yeah, if you were going to use a hammer and a punch, this is what I would do. I would keep it in there like that and just hit it, just blunt force. And it may help, hopefully it comes out. <laughs> so you want to have it in there like kind of cockeyed, like boop, like that. All right. I'm sure there's a, actually, there is another tool. There's a blind hole bearing puller. There's a way you can pull this out instead of trying to push it out. Um, actually, there is. So there's three ways to do it. All right. But, um, we're going to use, I'm going to use the press. So, <laughs> press is probably the most graceful one. That's the one the, the, with the less, the least violence. <laughs> say, okay. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this. So, so it moves the spacer a bit. Okay. There. Let's see it moving a little bit. Okay. Now it's got a good little place to sit. Now you may destroy. Yeah. Like I said, the bearing may get destroyed depending on you know, where it's at. Okay. So I want to make sure this is flat. Surface down there, all right. And yeah, so if if it just suddenly stops, that's bad, all right. Okay, okay. let's do this. So I'm gonna tighten the jack. I think I only need one jack handle, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna push it forward a little. More. I'm gonna hold it like this to make sure it stays on top of the bearing. You'll know it's not on the bearing if it slips off like like that. Okay, it'll just suddenly fall down. All right, and you probably I don't know I can't can't see what I'm doing, but rotate it in a way that like yeah it'll 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 catch on there. All right, and here we go. Stuff falling off of my press. Yep, there we go. All right, at some point, the bearing will fall out. All right, but it just just remember. Oh, there we go. It's done. Piece of cake. Ta da! All right, so yeah. See, the bearing is down there now. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah. That was easy. And and yeah, so I Hayes Mega paid a lot of money for this for this uh press, so I I, I need to use it. <laughs> that's that's the reasoning for doing it this way. Okay, I'm gonna release the pressure. Alright. Get this out of there. Okay. So when you when you're trying to press it out. Try to catch it on the side of this right here, okay? Or you could, could you do it the other way? No, it won't fit in. So yeah, you just gotta find something to drive it out with, all right? This is, uh, I like to use an extension because it's kind of blunt, you know, and it's and it's pretty soft and it's, I could, you could pretty easily replace it if I break it, so. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that didn't destroy, damage the hub. Oh, the spacer fell out when I took the wheel out. Here's the spacer. 
Do not forget to put this back in, guys, all right? Do not forget to put it back in or else you're gonna have to take the bearing out and you're gonna damage it. All right, so there's the bearing that came out. Okay, it's an NBK 6202-2RS, all right? And this one moves pretty smoothly. How come it didn't move before? This one moves. Okay, maybe I didn't need to replace it. Okay. I don't think I have to replace it, guys. <laughs> it sure was gritty when I when I dinged it. All right, so just make sure that the so be careful. This this side is the rotor side, and the rotors are really fragile, right? I mean, yeah. But you want to make sure you're pressing on the uh, on the hub, all right? And and the and what's attached to the hub? The bolts, all right. So I'm pressing on the bolts. If you press too hard, you'll bend the hub, and and then then it'll break. Okay, it might crack or something. Okay, this one should be easy. So this time I'm just gonna flip this guy around. Okay, and like I said, if you wanna take it out, if you don't have a press, you can just hit it with a hammer. All right, it should just come right out. All right, I could, I could probably use a bigger, let me use a bigger, wait, oh yeah, that's perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's got something to press on, it's fine. All right. We're gonna tighten this. Okay. Now the bolts aren't as big on the other side, so I don't know if it'll come out all the way. It's a problem. Come out so straight. It didn't come out the other side. Keep on going. I felt something move. It moved really suddenly. I should be wearing safety glasses too, guys. Oh, there we go. As long as it moves, keeps on moving. Okay, there we go. I felt it drop out. Let the pressure out. And then uh, we should be good. Take the wheel out. There's the bearing. And it's it, this one's in even better shape. Look at how smooth it is. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just going to replace it anyway. This one's a little gritty. Yeah, this one's definitely a little gritty. Maybe this one is wearing out. The other one was on the sprocket side. So, yeah, that's the side with all the power and stuff. So, Okay, whatever. Okay, now we're going to drive in the new bearings. All right, so this is the old bearing. But um, you're going to have to find a something to drive it in. All right, I'm going to use a socket, a 24 millimeter... Uh, impact socket all right that that is, uh, is just the right size it's just a little bit you want it to be a little bit smaller than what your what when the bearing size is all right so it doesn't get hung up and uh and yeah and then um you just want you want it to be a little bit smaller than the diameter of the bearing if, if not it's going to get hung up all right this is almost the perfect size all right also you want to yeah just to be safe i would use the open-ended one all right not the not the part you put the socket in so you make sure you don't put any pressure on the inner race okay okay I got my seal driver 24 millimeter impact socket um, and then I got to go get my frozen bearing all right okay I uh, also I might note that uh, if you wanted to you could pop the seals off on this and pack it with grease if you want, all right? But I'm, I'm hoping that there's grease in there. All right, I'm gonna slip this in there. Okay, didn't slide right in. So, freezing it didn't help. <laughs> Hopefully it'll help a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna put it with the open-ended down. And you wanna make sure it's flat on the anvil first. All right. Wow, perfect, perfect fit. <laughs> and then you want to center it as best as you can to the rim. Okay. 
think we're good. All right, full speed ahead, Captain. Well, steady, steady as she goes, right? <laughs> That's what you want. It's going in crooked. There we go. The wheel is a little bit crooked. Oh. Better. There's a plenty of room. The socket. Okay, I'm just gonna push that down until it kind of bottoms out. Okay, I felt it bottom out. It'll suddenly get hard to push in. All right. Like I said, if you're gonna, if you don't have a press, you can just hit it with a hammer. All right. Hopefully it'll go in. But that's probably when freezing it will help the most. <laughs> all right. There we go. Bearings in there. So you can see. Okay, so a very important next step. All right, very important next step. I'm gonna take this out. It's good to get some fresh bearings in there, you know? All right, I'm gonna flip this over. Some dirt in there, man. It's so clean in there. All right, um, I'm gonna go get your spacer, right? And put it in. Stick it in there. Do not forget that. All right, because if you if you put put the bearing in, you forgot the spacer, you're screwed. <laughs> Your SOL. You have to take it out and put it back in. At least take one out. All right. Okay, flipped it over. I'm gonna go get my other bearing out of the freezer. Another thing that you can do to help is uh, you could get a torch and heat the hub up a little bit, all right? But, all right, we're going to stick this in there. I'm going to try to get the spacer as centered as possible, but it's not a big deal. But but it, it'll, it'll, you want it to be centered because you got to get the axle through there, right? So. Okay. Kind of drop it in there a little bit. Get your driver. Oh, it's a little taller than before. Hold on. Let's push this up a little bit. Okay. There we go. Perfect fit. Presses at the perfect height. I don't know why it's not level. That's weird. It should be level. Yeah, make sure it's everything is pressing on the, the anvil. I don't know. Maybe the jack is crooked or something. Or maybe just gotta move it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, I should just slide in. Try feel that the socket. Should move the socket up a little bit. So remember, there's another lip in there, all right? There's a there's actually a bigger part that the seal goes in. You don't want the you don't want the the driver, all right? The socket to get stuck on that on the way in, or else you could damage your hub. Okay, driving it in, driving it in. I feel I feel it stopped. Okay. Yep. I don't feel it moving anymore. I can feel I can't I can't feel it moving on the lever anymore. So I'm going to release the pressure and I think we're done okay new bearings installed I like them apples okay final oh. part of the install here get your seal all right all right that's the way the seal should go all right with this so just install it the way you just install it the way that you installed it all right this way all right this way the the close part facing outward all right his is gonna put a little bit of grease on the edges to help you know seal it a little better and help slip it in there just a teeny tiny bit okay it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the sealing surfaces too but we'll do that when we come back when we uh, put the axle in there we'll go and install it. all right you could um, it's probably 
you might be able to get it in without uh without any tools all right so i'll say let's see if we can do it okay let's see if i can just massage this one in yeah 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 there we go okay i was able to get it in without much fuss that's in there pretty good but just to be sure so what I'm going to use to drive the other side in is a 27 millimeter regular socket all right it's it's just the right size all right just find a driver that's just the right size and we're gonna stick it in there and then tap it in you can probably get you can probably just get a like a rubber hammer and tap it around it too but you don't want to damage the rubber, okay? I'll be gentle with it. Okay. Should be good. Slip it over. So I've taken the uh, little bolt thingy sticking out of the stand. I've, I've lowered it all the way so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put some grease around the seal here on the outer part. So it slides in nicely and provides a good sealing surface around it. Okay, probably don't need to do it, but I'm gonna stick it right there. Okay, this time I'm gonna use just the driver to get it in, okay? Just make sure it's inside the seal, all right? I'm gonna tap around it. All right, if you see it coming in crooked, it on the other side. Alright, it's made out of oops, it's made out of rubber and it's a uh, you know, little little bend. The bearing's still moving nice. The bearing does move really smoothly. So it's much better than it was before, but when I took the bearings out, they seemed fine. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna double check this one because that other one went in like a whole lot. Okay, nope, that looks good, okay. All right, and then the the last thing you probably want to do is just stick your seals in there. All right, this is the not the seal side. You want to yeah, stick the uh, just make sure it goes in there nicely. Yeah, and the spacer's kind of worn out. Yeah, so what you're gonna want to do is add a little grease. So I, I know I should I should replace the spacer. I do have another one. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna replace the spacer. Um, they do kind of wear out after a while. So just put a little bit of grease on the inner lip here, okay? Okay, so before you install your wheel, um, it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the lip here, all right? And obviously, like, yeah, grease up your axle, grease everything up, you know? It's good to have lubricant over everything. All right, and then, then in the spacer goes. Right, and it should be good and just go ahead and install your wheel and then uh, that's it all right I hope you guys uh, learned something I hope that was entertaining uh, that is how you change the rear wheel bearings on a Sora light B wheel all right more specifically a Sora light B super moto wheel uh, to tell you the truth uh, I don't think you could do this with the with the dirt wheels all right the dirt wheels like it's a bigger wheel so it may not fit in the press all right in that case uh, you got to use plan B, all right? Um, the best way to do it is with the press. Uh, the second best way to do it is with the hammer, all right? There is also another tool that you could use. It's called a blind pull bearing puller. Basically, it's got a little 
it's got these little claws that you, you stick it in there and you tighten it and the claws expand and then you get a slide hammer and you pull it out all right that, that's a third way that you can do it all right so there's you know what, the, what they say there's a more than one way to skin a cat right well there you go <laughs> All right, but the best way to do it is with the press, all right, because I paid a lot of money for that press, so I, I need to use it <laughs> just by having it, right? Okay, but it worked perfectly. Freezing the bearings before you put them in helps helps a little bit easier. You can also grease the outer race of the bearings, all right, the, the part that, you know, that goes in, and that might help it slip in a little bit. If you're still having trouble, you can heat the hub up with the torch, but don't heat it up too much, all right? Um, I did it with the sprockets on there, all right, um, and the rotor. Uh, just make sure that wherever you're pressing on, all right, is on, um, is like, is all, the, the weight is evenly distributed, okay? And if, you pr if you're putting a lot of pressure, if you shouldn't have to put a lot of pressure on that, on the press, all right? You'll feel it, it'll go in, it'll go in, or, or like, it'll go in, it might get hung up, and then it'll just, it'll go in a lot, you know? Um, it might do that. But for the most part, it's pretty well behaved with my install. All right, it went in nice and smoothly for the most part. Uh, I think only only one time it got caught was when I was trying to remove the other one. It was kind of came out like kind of cockeyed, and I had to give it a little bit more pressure to get it to, to pop out, and it, and then it did. It just it literally it popped out. <laughs> okay, um, so it might that might happen, or it might just go, go out nice and smooth. All right, sometimes they're behaved, and sometimes they're not. All right, uh, even easier if you don't have the hub on the wheel. All right, but not how, how many people are. You know that only unless you're building a new wheel then you, you would have it in that condition right <laughs> all right uh, but yeah so just make sure the surface that you're pressing on is level all right and the and the weight the pressure that you're putting on it is distributed evenly all right because you may bend that hub all right um, I, I don't know how the the hubs on the swan are kind of kind of not so strong as well say all right they look a little dinky is what I'm gonna say but but hey um, and then the seals are pretty easy to put in. I showed you two ways that you could do it. Press it in with your thumbs and then kind of work, massage it in there. Uh, or uh, if you can get the right size socket, just bang it in there with the, with the hammer, all right? I would say do both, all right? If it kind of gets stuck, like, like the first time I did it, it got stuck at the end. So I kind of leveled it off with the, with, the, um, with the driver, all right, the socket. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do it. I hope you guys learned something uh, and that's the first time I did it. Did I really have to do it? Eh. When, you know, when I took those bearings out, I, I, I felt them and I'm like, hey, they're moving now. What the heck, man? So I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the spacer was in there kind of crooked and it was, it was binding it or whatever. So maybe I didn't need to replace it. But I, I, I definitely felt, felt that, the, that the bearing that was on the sprocket side was a little bit more worn out. I can feel it. It's a little gritty and stuff, but it was still moving. So. If it's at the point where like it's really gritty and it's barely moving, then that's when you're gonna wanna replace it. Right. I checked all my wheels and they all move pretty smoothly except for this one. Okay, so so that's why I changed it. All right. Um, okay, was it too hard? Thanks for watching. Hey, it's Miguel. Um, I will have a link to where you can get the bearing. All right, at AmericanSoron.com and in the description of the video, if you would like to purchase one of their bearing kits. Uh, additionally, you can also just uh, put the number of the bearing in and you can just buy the bearing if you just want the bearing. Right? The nice thing about the Dirty Bike kit is it came with new seals, alright? So I just put new seals. Um, yeah, you can kind of damage them when you take them out, so just just be careful and you could reuse them. Right? But, but, uh, but yeah, I replaced them, so I ca it came with it, so I said, hey, let's replace it. <laughs> alright, thanks for watching. Hey, we out. If you took this little valve core out, put it back, okay? In my case, I had to, all right? If, if you don't, the best way to do it is without the tire on there, though, okay? okay? Just fun. <laughs> if you want to see how well a uh, uh, supermoto wheel without a tire fits in there, in the Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight 20 ton press, perfectly. <laughs> easy, all right? That's the, no tire, so it's really easy without the tire. All right, just for reference, this is stock 19 inch rear. Yeah, you know what? That's a tough one. I don't think you can do it with the tire on, but you could you could definitely do it with the tire off. All right. If you if you remove the tire, you can get it into a 20-ton Harbor Freight press. All right. Yeah.